We're now in the last three countries of our journey. Closing off our tour is Uruguay, Paraguay, and Argentina. These three countries border each other and have a few things in common. However, they have each found something that makes them unique and special. Join me in this local journey through Latin America. Israel Marin is the owner of Abraxas Kitchen, an Uruguayan and Brazilian restaurant found in White Rock, British Columbia. Even though Israel is from Mexico, he learned much of Uruguayan culture and food from his business partner Abraxas, who is originally from Uruguay. Since opening the restaurant, Israel enjoys many Uruguayan dishes, including two of which he will highlight today. Uh, basically, I'm Mexican. Uh, I know it's a little bit weird uh, making an interview for a, a Uruguay food, but uh, my partnership, uh, my partner, he is from Uruguay and her wife is from Brazil. So we take the idea for open a restaurant with the concept of Sud American infusion. In this restaurant, we have a, 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 a food focus in the Sud American infusion. Mostly of the dishes is half like a Uruguay and another half is from Brazil. In the part of the Uruguay, we are so focused on the steaks and the quality of the meat. Because in Uruguay, it's so popular the meat and also mostly all the dishes are, uh, are, are the base from the, for the meat. Uruguay is located in the South America. It's close to the border to um, Argentina with the Paraguay and also with the, in the north with Brazil. There are 19 departments in Uruguay. The capital city of Uruguay is called Montevideo. The currency of Uruguay is called Peso Uruguay. A few indigenous groups from Uruguay include the Charrua. Other significant tribes are the Minuané, Yaro, Guenoa, Chana, Boan, and Arachan. Okay, one of my most popular um, dishes from Uruguay, we call it Montevideo, which actually is a capillar from Uruguay. And basically it's like a kind of a sandwich and we put uh, one uh, sausage on the top, uh, vinaigrette and also fried egg on the top. So it's so tasty, maybe it sounds so simple, but it's so, so tasty.
And the second one could be the asado del gaucho, which uh, the asado del gaucho is a short ribs. We, we add uh, vinaigrette on the side, and also we put uh, one uh, sausage we, we made in the restaurant, and we put on the top. And like I say, uh, the speciality of a restaurant is made on the grill, so you could get this flavor like the streets from Uruguay. It's uh, smoky and tasty, and, and also, uh, in, in the way we cook the meat, it's so tender. So it's perfect, and for your mouth, it will be like a kind of eating butter. Uh, the last year we was bought the best Latin American restaurant in all White Rock, and also when we received this prize, uh, this reward, we, we never, we never was expecting that because we, when we opened this restaurant, we don't believe the people we love or, or food in the way we cook it, and when we start to uh, receive all this uh, support from the locals. We were so happy, honestly. That was, we were so happy. Me and Abraxas, we were speechless in the, in the moment, and also we were screaming and saying, yeah, we made it, but we don't know we made it. Um, and yeah, I think that could be the most fun. In this moment, Abraxas is not around, around here, but if you know Abraxas, is the same name of the restaurant, you could see like, uh, in this restaurant, it's not only thinking about the business. We are thinking about the neighborhood, and we are thinking like, uh, try to uh, serve the best meals for all local people, and not only the local people. We want to be recognized for the, most of the people around Vancouver, and so, so sorry. A few tourist attractions from Uruguay include La Mano de Punta del Este. It depicts five human fingers emerging from the sand. Cabo Polonio is a helmet located in the eastern coast of Uruguay. Punta Ballena is a small peninsula and a resort, as well as an important tourist attraction on the coast. Colonia del Sacramento is a city in southwestern Uruguay, across the Rio de Plata from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Me and my partner, we love the yerba mate. The yerba mate is a typical drink from Uruguay, which is like a kind of uh, hot tea and herbal tea. We have a lot of benefits. Um, I would like to, uh, to share with you, like uh, we are the only restaurant in all White Rock, we only serve uh, this uh, yerba mate. Uh, it's, it's something magic, you could take uh, any time of the day, and also if you are a little bit tired, you could drink a mate. If you want to uh, share one time with your friends, you could drink a mate. So you, you could find the perfect excuses every time, and the answer all will be the mate. Villalba is the Honorary Consul of Paraguay in British Columbia. Villalba is going to show us a bit about Paraguayan culture, as well as give us an insight into the spoken languages found in Paraguay. Paraguay is one of the two landlocked countries in Latin America, and the country is located right between Argentina, Brazil, and Bolivia, south of Bolivia. We're divided by departamentos, by departments, actually. Uh, 19 of them. So the country is divided into two different regions, the western region and the eastern region. The western region is about 61% of the national territory, and it's a semi-arid land. But the other 49% uh, of the territory, 39% of the territory is basically um, very lush, it's semi-tropical. Not tropical, but semi-tropical. The capital city of Paraguay is Asuncion, uh, which is surrounded by rivers, interesting enough. The country is landlocked, but the city of its four sides, three are rivers and two are international waters with Argentina. Absolutely, it's about 7.5 million people. Paraguay also has close to a million Paraguayans abroad between Argentina, Spain, the United States, but it's basically in the country about 7.5 million people. 
Paraguay has a very diverse and very rich ethnic groups, right? The core of the land, I would say, those of us that are Spanish and Italian descent. Actually, the Ministry of Culture has an estimate, according to DNA, not hearsay, it's about 40% of us are actually Italian descent. But we have very robust groups, very robust. We have very indigenous groups. The Tupi Guarani people still inhabit the land. We got uh, other tribes, including the Ayoreo in northern Paraguay as well. Uh, some Guayaquil Indians still inhabit the eastern side of the country. Now, Paraguay is an immigrant nation, just like very many countries in Latin America. So we have a very large uh, Ukrainian-Russian community in the south. We got the third largest Japanese community in the Americas. And we have the second largest um, Canadian community after Mexico and Jalisco in the Americas as well. So we have a very diverse uh, community. Paraguay is the most bilingual country in the world. And uh, I would, it's right now close to 85 to 90% of the people speak Guarani and Spanish. Both are national languages. So we are the most bilingual country in the world. What makes us different than other Latin American countries, or including um, immigrant nations like the United States and Canada, is that we, we people of mixed descent or European descent or any other descent, we speak indigenous languages. Here is very rare, for example, in Canada for someone of not indigenous descent to speak an indigenous language. That is not the case in Paraguay. If we look back to colonial times, what we find is that the Spanish got Guaraniticized, as opposed to just everyone learning Spanish. So uh, we have a very unique and very proud history when it comes to languages and customs and culture. I'm a former uh, chief monetary officer of the Central Bank in Paraguay. And Paraguay prides itself to have the most stable currency in the Americas, right? Um, if you look at other countries in the region, the depreciation of the local currency, sometimes they have taken 22 zeros, 23 zeros. Paraguay, since its inception of the central bank today, uses the same currency with the same value as it did back in the 40s. So yes, we do have one of the most, if not the most, stable currency in the, in the Americas. Paraguay is the fifth largest exporter of beef in the world. A country like Argentina is a larger producer, a much larger producer of beef, but we are the fifth largest exporter of beef in the world. An amazing taste. So I think there's again a lot of pride in Paraguayans eating beef, but it's not limited to beef. Um, there's something called chipa. Some people call it chipa, which is um, basically a dough with uh, milk and eggs and uh, flour. Uh, it's just an amazing taste. Um, Brazilians call it pão de queijo in Portuguese, right? In, Argenti in Argentina, it's called as chipá, it's known as chipá, so it has now branched out not just from Paraguay, but to at least the neighboring countries. There's something very unique to Paraguayan food, and we got something called sopa paraguaya, which I guess the closest to that would be corn cake in English, right? But it's the only solid soup that we know in the world. So it's again, it has a lot to do with ingredients of corn, uh, milk, and lard in some states, that's how our, our departments are how they use it. Uh, milk, eggs, but it's really a corn cake. It's a fascinating piece of, um, piece of meal. If you go to the northern part of the country, I think I'm fascinated by, by, by what I see in nature. Yes, it's very true that 61% of the national territory is fairly unoccupied. Uh, yes, there are large tracts of land where there's cultivation and there are cattle ranching, the Canadian colonies and so on and so forth, but you have really intense lakes. You've got semi-arid land. Some of the largest falls in the world are also nearby with our neighbors in Argentina and Brazil. And those are impressive. 
And from a tourism perspective, it is easier to reach the falls, what is called the Iwasu Falls, from Asuncion than there is maybe from Buenos Aires or from Sao Paulo. So we got good attractions in the east, the center, the north of the country. Now, uh, if you ask me what I'm very biased about, is the city of Asuncion. So there are tons of bars and clubs and restaurants, but I always love to go out. The temperature is usually high, except at winter time. So people hang out. Uh, if I were to add one more, it would be the Itaipu Dam. Paraguay has the largest dam in the world with Brazil. Uh, we are the largest exporter of electricity per capita in the hemisphere. We are a country right now where our sources of energy, we have already transitioned. We're not going to transition. We have transitioned. We export electricity to Argentina, clean energy to Argentina. We export clean energy to Brazil, and we use some of the turbines for ourselves as well. But that is in addition to the Jacineta Dam, which is with Argentina, another two dams that are completely national. So yes, we're a clean tech country, and a lot of people like to see that when they go home. Ricardo Arredondo is the Consul General of Argentina in British Columbia. Arredondo will give us an insight into Argentina's culture as well as showcase its popular touristic attractions. Argentina is exactly in the other extreme of uh, the American continent. It's in South America and it's the, the southern, uh, most southern country in, in the continent. Argentina has 24 provinces uh, and one, uh, um, one autonomous city, which is the city of Buenos Aires, which is the capital of the country. Yes, in Argentina, yes, 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 we have a very, a very, uh, I wouldn't say large, but relevant indigenous population. And we, we support them. We are part of uh, the UN Declaration on Indigenous uh, People. Yes, uh, there are many indigenous groups in Argentina. And the, the first, the main, uh, I would say, are the, the Diaguitas, Mapuche, Tobas, Aymaras, um, and there are some, some, some more that it will be, you know, there's a long list to, to sum it up in, in a few words. Yeah. There's also uh, people, it, it's a melting pot, there's a lot of, um, although it's mainly, mainly European uh, descent, like 60, 70 percent. There's also a lot of uh, Middle Eastern people. Uh, Argentina has the second uh, largest Jew community in the world. It's mainly, mainly Spanish. Uh, many people uh, speak English, uh, some French, uh, German, other languages, but uh, uh, the second language probably will be English. You know, it's the mo most uh, well-known language in, in Argentina. But it's not, uh, it's not an official language. We have only one official language, which is Spanish. Ignacio Catena is originally from Argentina and now resides in British Columbia. Ignacio will introduce us to one of the country's dishes, the empanada. He will also teach us how to pour mate, a typical Argentinian hot drink. I'm going to make a traditional plate from Argentina, which are empanadas, basically from Mendoza. It's a different kind in different uh, provinces of the country. They make them uh, with other ingredients, but, and we make them in the oven, not fried. The ingredients are uh, a dough, which is made of wheat flour, 
uh, ground beef, onions, some cumin, paprika, a bit of oregano, uh, salt and pepper, boiled eggs and some olives. This dish, for me, uh, reminds me to, my, to the Sundays I would spend with my family all together, going to some places, uh, to the river or to the mountains. I would get the empanadas and go there and eat them together. And also a reason to spend, uh, to share time with my friends and, and family. This guy here, yes. Yeah, this guy, I got it on my first trip with my wife when we went back to Argentina. It's from Cariló, and it's the Wisdom Nyom. They have different kinds, but this one is specifically for wisdom. So this mate is like the traditional one, made of the gourd. Uh, what it means to us, also uh, like um, a reason to, to share a moment with friends and uh, also to have some energy. <laughs> Instead of coffee, we, we have mate mostly. But yeah, it's, that's what it is. It's, a, it's ground leaves from a, a bush. It's a yerba mate. It grows in the north of Argentina. And you put it in the gourd, and then you basically pour water over it multiple times. <laughs>
obviously you have to start uh, in Buenos Aires, which is the capital of the city, which is a very, very important, huge city. We are talking about 15 million people and um, you have very important uh, monuments, museums, uh, galleries of arts, uh, restaurants, uh, shopping malls, uh, etc. In the south, we have the largest glacier in the world, which is Glacier Perito Moreno. And if you have the chance to go, the, the glacier um, once, twice a year, breaks. It's like a mountain that suddenly breaks and it's like a big explosion and the ice falls into the water. It's very nice. Uh, and there are also many other places. If you like wine, you should go to the west. If you want to see more of the indigenous population, you will go to the northwest, to Tucumán, Salta, and Jujuy, where the independence was declared. And, we have very nice uh, landscape uh, in Jujuy. There's a mountain that has seven different colors. So it's very, very nice to see. And uh, we also have uh, nice little towns uh, over there, you know, very, very um, like colonial towns, you know, it's very nice. I hope this local journey through Latin America was able to give you an insight into the vibrant Latin culture, food and traditions. I thank those who were able to pass on their knowledge of their home countries to us and I invite you to explore these lands and see the beauty of Latin America.